Okay. All right, thank you. Um, so let me see where okay, what is your advice for a medical student seeking international scholarship? What are the things I can start doing now to do? Like, oh, you're yeah, interested in that thing, so you're interested in um, international scholarship. Yes, yeah, so everything that we've been saying so far are the things that you can do to give your chances. So we talked about having good grades as something that puts you, that puts your foot in the door. And then we talked about extracurricular activities, leadership, politics, entrepreneurship, music, sports, whatever it is that you might be interested in. So these are the things that boost your chances. Showing that number one, you're good academically, and number two, you were able to participate in other activities that were outside your school. Another thing is research. If you can, you know, put your mind to it to participate in research at different levels and not just um, going into research, but trying to publish your research papers. And this could be something as little as the term paper that you wrote that you, you know, submit to a journal for publication. It doesn't have to be you know, a research that you go through questionnaires and the rest. It could be a review of something somebody else has said. It could be your term paper that you wrote on a particular topic. It doesn't, there are so many things that you can work on when it comes to the area of research. But if you can do that or plan to do that from right now, that would significantly boost your chances because scholarships or are looking for people that have, you know, distinguished themselves at different levels, not just academic, not just research, but on extracurricular um, levels as well. So put that in mind when you're applying, when you plan to apply for this scholarship. So someone says, I have a problem with revision of things I have done before. I have a problem with revision of things I have done before. I never seem to have enough time to do it because I have to meet up with the workload. Yes, that can be difficult. It might not be everything that you'll be able to um, revise um, after you've read. But one thing that I would advise you to do, that's where past questions come in. So when you have gone through past questions, you have a fair idea of the topics that they might be leaning more towards. So even if you're not able to revise every single thing that you have read, try your best to revise those things that you've noticed keep coming up over the years. A topic that you still keep like being repeated as two years go by. So try to revise those ones. You might not be able to, you might not be able to revise every single thing you've read. In fact, it's almost impossible to do that. But that's where questions come into play. So you use that to guide the revision topic in the whole process. So how do you solve questions when you are not fully prepared? I find it difficult. I think everybody would find that difficult. If you are not fully prepared for a question and you see, it will be difficult. I'm not sure there's like any um, caveat to that. It will be difficult. So if you want to solve a question you are not fully prepared for, better start praying. <laughs> That's the best advice I can give you. You know, because if, if you have a question, you really don't know how to answer it. There's always, um, let, me, let me just give you some, some tips that I know would help. There's always an outline. Even if you don't really have an idea about how to answer the question, you can always follow an outline. You know, the introduction, it depends on the kind of question you're answering. But let's say, um, let's say it's something in the clinical arm, for example. We would always do introduction, talk about the epidemiology or you know, that particular thing you're talking about. You go into the clinical features, go into investigations, then management of that case. So even if you are not able to talk extensively about each of the headings, as long as they see that, okay, you have a fair idea of what you have to write, even if you don't know everything you're supposed to write, make sure that you have your outline ready. Even if you're not able to fill every single space after you give me outline, make sure that that outline is there so that your lecturer knows that, okay, you actually do have an idea. That could help you. You might not get the maximum, but it would definitely mean that you are not getting to do it. So, um, how do I train myself on research? I love it. Oh, I'm glad you love it. That's great. Um, how do you train yourself? There are various online courses you can take. 
okay, I'm seeing the person said, I mean past questions. You mean, how do you train yourself on past questions? Sorry, maybe you could type it again. I'm not sure I understand the question. You mean, how could you train yourself on past questions? Is that what you're saying? Um, or this your last? Please um, clarify. <laughs> okay, seems this person is a bit confused. <laughs> but he says, How do I train myself on research? I do not mean past questions. Okay. Um, so, how do you train yourself? I was saying that there are various online courses that you can take that deal with research writing, how to, you know, how to form a research paper, how to read literature, how to do a critical review of papers that have been written already. So you could go to um, Coursera. Um, let me put that in here. I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people know about Coursera. It's um, an application you can download. Let me start for everybody. It's an application that you can download on your Google Play Store, um, Apple Store, and you can take a lot of free online courses. You can just put in research writing and you see what it brings out. Subscribe to those courses and take them. You know, basics, of course, you start with the basics and then you build up. So that teaches you how to go about writing research papers and good research papers for that matter. So um, I'm seeing something else. <laughs> okay, I'm not reading out your question. So yes, thank you very much. Um, I think that's the end. I can't see any other questions. Is there any other question anybody wants to ask? Because I can't see anything else. Okay, I think we're done. Okay, I think that brings us to the end of this, right? Um, there are no other questions, as far as I can see. But let me put in my um, contact details for anybody that is interested. You can reach out to me. Oh, I'm seeing questions now, but let me still put in my my contact details. So you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, particularly LinkedIn, um, if you want to get to me. Or I think I'll just send it to Dr. Mabarisa. Is that fine? No, you can send it here if you don't mind. You can send it here. Okay. Depends. You can send it here so that to make it faster. So my link okay. or anywhere you want to reach out to me, really. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn. I think that's my most preferred way. Okay. So yeah, don't talk to my name on LinkedIn. Okay. So, Dr. Bolu, we are so, so grateful. Um, it was a very wonderful time. I, I always like sessions like this because for me, um, you talked about being passionate, I mean, doing, solving a problem that you're passionate about. And I think for me, I'm passionate about uh, helping medical students. Um, of course, it's been quite a long time and I get excited and excited every year about it. And, you know, every time I have sessions like this, I learn more you know, uh, so that I can also can tell uh, people that come to see me one to one. So I would share with not just my own experience, but from the experience of those that have done very well. And thank you for this session. I'm sure everybody was re really had a great time. OK, so God bless you. Have a wonderful time. Let's just say a um, short word of. If you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, so go ahead. Can she be unmuted? Um, the admin, can you unmute her, please? Let her round up the session with us. Okay, as, please, admin, can you unmute her? Thank you. Oh, am I? <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Has he done that? Okay, if he has not done that, let me just say a word of prayer. So please, let's remember, um, I'll still be online. 
I'm still going to be talking with us online. I'm going to have an heart to heart session with those of us that would love to wait. I want to talk about the future of the mentorship program and other things that BOJ has in stock for us. Um, I don't know if the admin has, okay, I think he has not. Okay, so let's just pray in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for this session. We ask that you help us um, to excel, help us to become students that will make you proud. In Jesus' name, we pray. Oh, he unmuted you. So, Bolu, let's have your prayers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for unmuting me. <laughs> okay, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that you have given us in your presence. I thank you, Lord, for helping me to be your mouthpiece, for helping me to shine your light and to give glory to your name. I ask the Lord Jesus to will help each and every one of the people that uh, have tuned in to this program today. I ask that even the people that have not been able to listen to this program, that Lord Jesus will help them in every area in which they are having difficulty. That you will help them in their studies, you will help them to excel in all the different spheres of their life. That Lord you will be with them, you will guide them, you will make it easy for them. You will give them the inspiration that they need to make an impact in the world. You give them that chance that they are looking for to impact and bring glory to your name forever. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today. I ask that you go with each and every one of us and continue to guide to protect us in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Dr. Bolu. We're so grateful. Have a blessed um, day. Thank you so much. So we're listening. Uh, yeah, it's a great privilege. Thank you so much. So we're releasing us, um, as many of us that would want to. But for those of us that want to be part of my short um, interactive session, you can just wait. I will give us two minutes, and by 8.30, we're going to start this short interactive session. So the session has ended. Um, yeah. OK, so you're welcome, everyone. Um, if you're with me on this session, can I have an hi? Can you just type mm -hmm. an hi if you're with me? Just type mm -hmm. an hi. I wonder what the name